प्लीज प्रेस बेल आईकॉन टू सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल सीमा गौतम फॉर मोर वीडियो everyone in this part we are going to learn about the british rule in india exactly we are going to learn the expansion of the british rule in india so the british first came to india as traders in the 17th century however by the middle of 19th century the british succeeded in eliminating all their rivals and establishing an all india empire now we are going to discuss policy of british expansion the east india company avoided wars with local monarchies as it was expensive option instead they devised various ways to take over each kingdom peaceful annexation based on the system of subsidiary alliances assuming control of the state by either declaring maladministration of the territories ruled by the subjugating rulers or employing the doctrine of lapse and finally military conquest when all other means seemed unfeasible before moving ahead first we'll discuss some of the points from the previous chapter or video traders to rulers so the british ruled india from 1858 to 1947 they formed laws and policies of their own in the module you will learn about the various effects the british rule had in india the commercial rivalry between the british and the french in india was aggravated by the fact that these two countries were political rivals in europe as well they fought three wars in india to establish their supremacy these wars are referred to as the carnatic wars carnatic wars the name given to the coromandel coast and its hinterland the outcome of three carnatic wars saw the british establish their political influence over the carnatic mughal emperor farukhsha issued a farman granting the english east india company the right to carry on duty free trade in bengal this angered the nawab of the bengal that is a siraj ud-daula siraj ordered the british to pay taxes to him like all other indian merchants the british refused to do so this angered the young nawab siraj was willing to let the europeans stay in his kingdom as traders but certainly not as masters siraj ud-daula was enraged the british had openly challenged his authority and he was determined to teach them a lesson robert clive now has to plot with some of the influential men in nawab's court to overthrow siraj ud-daula mir zafar the commander in chief of the nawab's force would be made the nawab of bengal in return for a large amount of money and important trading privileges when mir zafar was unable to meet the demands of the british they had disposed him and made his son in law mir qasim the new nawab of bengal mir qasim was competent and efficient ruler determined to free himself from foreign control he soon came into conflict with the british in 1763 war broke out between mir qasim and the british the nawab was defeated mir zafar was reinstated on the throne mir qasim was determined to recover his throne he escaped to awadh where he formed an alliance with sauzaudola the nawab of awadh and the mughal emperor shah alam ii the combined forces of the three allies clashed with the company troops at baksar in 1764 and were decisively defeated by the british clive introduced dual government in bengal in 1765 bengal now had two masters the nawab and the company the nawab was responsible for the general administration maintenance of law and order and justice the company had military power and the rights to collect and use the revenue of bengal this arrangement was known as dual government when well, hastings abolished the dual government and bengal was brought under the direct and complete control of the company now we'll move further 
and discussed about the expansion policies of the British in India. Instead, they devised various ways to take over each kingdom, peaceful annexation based on the system of subsidiary alliance, assuming control of the state by either declaring maladministration, misgovernment of the territories ruled by the subjugating rulers or employing the doctrine of lapse and finally military conquest when all other means seemed unfeasible. We'll move further and discuss about each policies which they have introduced. So first we'll go ahead with subsidiary alliance. The subsidiary alliance system was method perfected by Lord Wellesley, the Governor General of India from 1797 until 1805 to subjugate Indian powers without the cost and bother or giving trouble of war. Any Indian ruler whose security was threatened was encouraged to seek help from and enter into an alliance with the British who promised to promote the rulers from external attack and internal revolts. The Nawab of Awadh was the first ruler to enter into the subsidiary alliance with the British after the Battle of Baksar. However, the Nizam of Hyderabad was the first to accept a well-framed subsidiary alliance. The Indian ruler had to accept certain terms and conditions. This arrangement was known as the subsidiary alliance. These conditions were as follows. British troops would be permanently placed in the territory of the subsidiary state. The Indian rulers would have to pay for the maintenance of the troops. Payment could be made in cash or the kind of, that is by ceding part of his territory. He had to keep a British officials, that is residence, at his court. He could not employ any European except the British in his service or dismiss those who were already there. He could not form an alliance with any other power or declare war against any power without the permission of British. He would acknowledge the British company as paramount power. The subsidiary alliance proved very advantageous for British. The British maintained large armies at the expensive expenses of the Indian rulers, the British acquired valuable territories and subsidiary payments. This led to the expansion of British empire in India and an increase in its resources. The influence of the European rivals, especially the French, was excluded from the courts of the Indian rulers. The British controlled the foreign policy of the subsidiary state. Apart from the effect or impact. Now we'll discuss how the subsidiary alliance was disadvantageous for the Indians or we can say drawbacks for Indians. So subsidiary alliance had disastrous effects on the Indian states. The Indian rulers of subsidiary state lost their independence. They became virtual puppets in the hands of British. The payment of huge subsidies led to a heavy drain on their resources and the impoverishment and decay of the state, the administration collapsed. When the administration collapsed, the British used it as an excuse for annexing the kingdom on ground of misgovernment. The Indian rulers were fully protected by the British against external and internal enemies. They lost interest in the welfare of the people and neglected them as they were no longer afraid of revolts. The people suffered untold miseries under irresponsible and oppressive rulers. The subsidiary alliance aided the British in subjugating the powerful kingdom of the Marathas. These were the drawbacks for Indians. Now we'll move further and discuss the policies, Dalhousie policies of expansion. Lord Dalhousie, the Governor General of India from 1848 to 1856, adopted a number of methods to give the final touches to work of empire building in India. The methods he adopted were uh, doctrine of lapse, uh, places which he captured Satara, Jansi and Nagpur, annexation on the grounds of the Mala administration. Example, Avad. 
Doctrine of lapse is the next one which we are going to discuss. That is the policy of doctrine of lapse was formulated by Lord Dalhousie as a peaceful way of annexing subordinate Indian states and bringing them under the direct rule of company. According to the doctrine of lapse, all subordinate states, that is subsidiary states and the states created by the British, where the rulers died with without a natural male heir would automatically lapse that is pass into the hands of the British rulers without heirs could not adopt son according to the age old Hindu and Islamic traditions without the permissions of the company. Dalhoji applied the doctrine of lapse these estates which included Satara, Jansi and Nagpur. The families of the former rulers were pensioned off and their territories annexed. The annexation of these estates caused widespread resentment among the Indian rulers and became a potent factor responsible for the outbreak of the revolt 1857. Nana Sahib, the adopted son of Peshwa Bhaji Rao II, inherited his father's personal property but was not given the pension that had been paid to his father Nana Sahib became one of the important leaders of the revolt 1857. Now we will discuss about the Mal administration. The Haji also annexed some of the subordinate states on the grounds of Mal administration. Awadh was a subsidiary state which was annexed under the pretext. Even though it helped in expansion of British power, policies such as these created a lot of resentment against the British. These unjust policies would also become one of the most important reasons for the revolt of 1857. The subsidiary alliance which uh, the Nawab of Awadh had signed with Wellesley had protected the Nawab from external invasion and internal rebellions. It made the Nawabs complacent and unconcerned about affairs of the state. The payment of the annual subsidies to the companies exhausted the state treasury. When the administration was on verge of collapse, Lord Dalhousie struck. He brought charges of misgovernment or maladministration against the Nawab. On those grounds, he uh, deposed the Nawab and annexed Awadh in 1856. Many changes were introduced in the administration. This was greatly resentment by the people who preferred to be ruled by their own Nawabs than by foreigners. Awadh became one of the main centers of the revolt 1857. Now the weakness of the Indian states were fully exploited by the company, backed by the superior resources, political, economic and military. The company transformed the British Empire in India into the British Empire in, of India. Now we will discuss India in 1856. By 1856, the English East India Company had brought the whole of India under its control. The parts of the country that were nominally under Indian rulers were effectively under the control of the British. The British had eliminated all their rivals and established themselves as the paramount power in India. The factors responsible for the success of the British were the East India Company had an efficient army. The army of Indian rulers lacked modern weapons. British had developed a well-skilled naval forces. This was the extra boost to their military powers. East India Company had efficient economic resources to maintain their army, which they gained throughout the subjugation of the territories, whereas the Indian rulers led Fund. East India Company had succeeded in defeating all Indian rivals because Indian, Indians lacked unity. Every Indian ruler intended to fulfill very short sight, ambitious, and none aimed to build a united front. The Indian states needed 
modernization of their administration, military, and have a wide outlook in foreign affairs.